college-bound high school seniors have already made their choice as to what school they'll be attending in the fall. But it's never too early for sophomores and juniors to start prepping for the college application process. And this book you're looking at right there may be a good place to start. Be Committed, Get Admitted mm. was written by college admissions consultant Dr. Cynthia Colon. And Dr. Colon is joining us this morning with advice for parents and students. So Dr. Colon, thanks for being with us and a good morning to you. Good morning, Hazel. Good morning, Dan. Good morning. All right. So in recent years, there's, there's been an increase in, in the number of college applications, especially now that some schools aren't requiring SAT scores. So does it make it more competitive for high school students, or is it basically the same? Mm. No, that, that's a great question. The short answer is yes, it is more competitive. Interesting, there are fewer high school seniors graduating, but the applications continue to rise. Mm. So what students should do is really think about, you know, this is their platform. Think about the admission reader is going to get six to 12 minutes total to read their entire application. So you want to make sure that in those six to 12 minutes, it's interesting, engaging, and compelling. So say what you mean and mean what you say and get out. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. So, uh, you know, and you're a former college admissions officer yourself, so, and you believe in the importance for students to start building this relationship with the schools that they are actually applying to, right? Way before the application process is actually submitted. So what are some ways that somebody can connect with a school? Well, the first time a college hears from an applicant should not be when they submit the application. So earlier on, you want to sign up for their newsletter. You just go to the website, go to the admission page and subscribe. You're going to get those emails and you're going to find out if there are events locally, when that college admission officer is going to be at your high school, maybe. You can also sign up for virtual tours online. You can go in person and do a tour or an information session. So just start a learning early on and just think about every time you open an email, you're kind of getting like a gold star next to your name um, early on in the process. So it is okay for students to reach out to uh, college admissions officers directly? Directly, yes. Actually, most teenagers don't know this or they're intimidated to even reach out. So where, whether you're applying to Fordham or Ithaca or Vassar or SUNY Buffalo, there is a person at the admission office that's assigned to you, to your high school. So for example, I know Sam over at Vassar. Let's say Sam is in charge of Stuyvesant High School and you wanna just send an email, hi, Hi, Sam. My name is Adrian. I'm a student at Stuyvesant High School. I'm interested in philosophy major, or I want to know if you have a debate team. So it's okay to what I call DM, direct mm -hmm. message the person that's going to be advocating for you ultimately. Yeah, you're saying DM, which brings me to social media, because when I was applying, it was really all about your SAT score and mm -hmm. maybe your essay. And I always was like, well, why aren't you looking at the whole big picture here? But now there's a social media component. So how closely do schools really look at what a student is doing on social media? That's a great question. So I like to remind students, this is the biggest job application of your, your life, the college application. So you want to think, don't put anything on social media that you would be embarrassed to talk about in a job app, you know, in a job interview, so to speak, or, you know, embarrassed to talk to your, your parents about. Most colleges don't have the time to really go down the rabbit hole of your really investigating your social media. That's the truth but it does happen. So in the event that it did happen to you, you want to be sure that it's, you know, it, it, it embodies things that you value the most. So is it okay? I mean, you have to be creative. You said you have to make sure you're out there and noticeable. So you can put in video essays as part of your submissions? <laughs> So unless you're applying to like an audition, like a performing arts, you're submitting a yeah. music video, a dance video, those are required. Most colleges right now don't require videos, but some do make it optional. So I like oh. this option. So for example, when I worked at Vassar, we have this thing called MySpace. You could submit anything you want. And so if you're gonna create a video, one of my favorites was last year, a girl who had a, like she was a nail artist by just as a hobby, she loved it. So she did a video on each nail represent something different in her life. Um, you know, things that she did, people that she valued, um, things like that. And that was a great little video. So again, be compelling and engaging um, and be quick. You know, before we get to, to scholarship money, I do want to ask you about um, essays because you're saying that people should have four core essays written ahead of time for those college applications. Why four? Because don't they vary? Don't the questions all vary? Yes, you're so right, Dan. So 
in College Essay Bootcamp, we teach the core four. Every college-bound teen should have a cadre of core four. Who am I? Mm. What am I good at? What's something super cool about me? And what is my academic connection? So okay. I'll use me as a quick example. Who am I? I'm Mexican, Puerto Rican. Grew up with 14 theos and theas. What am I good at? I'm good at public speaking and mm. gathering students mm -hmm. for a cause. What is something super cool? I love college athletics. And academics, I wanted, back then, I wanted to be a sports journalist. Mm. Oh, so wow. once, you know, <laughs> once you know your four uh, essays yeah. or collection, that's your brand. And that's those essays you'll be able to retool oh, okay. and repurpose again. Okay. again. Yeah. We're about to run out of time, but just real quickly, how much scholarship money is out there? There are tens of millions of dollars that go unclaimed every year. So get started early, go to your counselor, school counselor office, do a Google search for local scholarships for New York City students. You can go to niche.com, unigo.com, scholarships.com, and the scholarship system. You can start as early as sophomore year and applying, and you can go as late as senior year in college. Oh, so it's never wow. too early. It's, never it's amazing mm -hmm. what's out there, too, because there, there was an app that you can type in, say, like, uh, I don't know, spaghetti making. And there's a scholarship for spaghetti making. I'm just making that up. <laughs> oh, wow. But there's a, there's an app that you type. There's a That's scholarship amazing. for the most niche thing for That's like a thousand cool, bucks here and there, but it all adds up. Any little bit of yeah, help fine. you can get. All yeah. right, Dr. Cynthia de Cologne, thank you so much for, for joining us this morning. You're the author of Be Committed, Get Admitted. We appreciate your time this morning.